How good is a cheap Chinese carbon gravel frame set? We are gonna look at this light carbon frame. We're gonna look inside the frame. We're gonna look over the paint and the build quality to see if it's worth the pretty cheap $800 price tag. I'm gonna need $800. With a claimed weight of 1,020 grams for a size 52 that I have, it's not a heavy lump, but we'll be sure to check that later in the video. So what is its purpose? What will this frame be used for? What drop dead gorgeous machine am I planning to create? This is a full gravel bike frame with huge tires clearance and more storage bolts than a Land Rover Defender. On first impressions, this Chinese carbon frame is like a work of art. Made from high modulus Torre T700 carbon fiber, it really does pop like a champagne cork under the lights. With light carbon, you don't just pick a color, you can send them examples of frames you like and they can suggest a color code for you. It's like having a personal bike frame stylist only without the price tag because this custom paint job only cost $150. Everything appears to be finished to a high standard, including the integrated bar and stem combo as well as the seat post. But what's on the surface is superficial, especially if beneath the surface lie some hidden secrets. Despite the looks, I need this frame to be robust because I'm going to be going off road, which means tree roots, countless potholes, and the odd backflip tail whip. In my dreams, I'm not Matt Jones. What's nice to see straight away is the front and rear brake caliper mounts have been faced. This is a good sign. And by faced, I mean there is no paint on the caliper mounts, the flat surface that will become best friends with the caliper. Around the rear derailleur hanger also looks very neat indeed. This is another area that can sometimes get overlooked or have excess paint, causing the derailleur hanger to be excessively tight. I must admit, just looking over this frame and I'm pleasantly surprised with what I'm seeing. The head tube is glorious and in your face with its sort of wide design. Along the top tube, we can see there are these mounts on the top. To be quite frank, there are mounts everywhere on this frame. On the down tube, there are three mounting points on the top and two underneath where you can store all your secrets. Now I have nothing to hide. The seat tube was looking equally delightful when there was a little rubber insert where your front derailleur cable can go through. Although, let's be real, who needs a front derailleur when you're running a one by setup? It's like having a car with a built-in cassette player. Thanks, but no thanks. But for all you lycra wearing rascals out there who just can't get enough of 22 or more gears, fear not, the brazon mount for the front derailleur looks solid as a rock. Around the bottom bracket is looking good as well. We have this traditional pinhole in the bottom that lets any moisture out of your frame for those of you who are brave enough to brave the storms. No one wants to be riding around on a two wheel pond. The paint on the forks is looking equally as good and is rudely interrupted by the mounting bolts on the outside of each blade. Even more storage. There doesn't look like any overspray on the Crown Race Eva, which is nice to see. You can tell that thought has been put into this frame and care has been taken when creating this naughty paint job. The seat post, I wish it doubled as a pump or a magic wand, but you can't have it all. It does have measurements on it though, which is nice to know when taking it on and off. This custom paint job from Light Carbon, as I said, was $150, which I think is great value considering this is a custom color. I basically asked for British Racing Green, think Aston Martin, and this was the end result. Let's take a look at the bottom bracket, the powerhouse of the bike that requires Herculean strength to handle those massive amounts of power that I'll be generating whenever I figure out how to generate that power that is. And let's not forget about precision because the press fit BB86 bearings need to fit like a glove. So let's grab the trusty Vernier caliper and see what it has to offer. On the left side of the bottom bracket, the first measurement was 40.7, then 40.6, 41 and 40.3. Three. So a slight variation, but pretty good overall. The bearings that are pressed into the bottom bracket shell are 41 millimeters. So hopefully this is a good fit. Like a match made in bottom bracket heaven, hopefully. On the right side, we have 41.1, 41.1, 40.3 and 41. One thing I did notice whilst doing the measurements is the surface of the bottom bracket cups isn't the smoothest. You can tell this more on the left side of the frame. Here are some pictures that give you an idea of what I'm talking about. It's not the easiest thing to see on camera, but hopefully these visuals help you understand. As for how this affects the ride, we will find out. Until then, I'm not losing any sleep over it. When digging around the bottom bracket, you can clearly see the asymmetrical design of this frame. And by asymmetrical, you can see the chain stays are not the same. This asymmetrical design is obviously deliberate, I hope, and it's done to give extra tire clearance from my understanding. And considering that this frame has clearance for up to 700 by 53C or 650V by 2.1 inch, 
I think they've done a pretty good job. I'd like to get some big fat, with a P, tires to really tackle the crustier winter weather here in the UK. Meticulously designed experiment. Now with this frame design, if you use a single chain ring, the max size is 42 tooth. If you are using a double chain ring, the max size is 54 by 42 teeth. Let's have a look at the headset bearings. We know the head tube is one and a half inch with 52 mil upper and lower bearings. I always like to check the fitment of the bearing and on the top, it was a pretty easy fit. There wasn't any play with the bearing in place, which is the main thing. With the caliper, we measured 52.2, 52.3, 52.3, and 52.3 so slightly bigger than the 52 mil bearing that is going to be in there but all very similar measurements we then rotated the frame 180 like a backflip to get a better look at the bottom headset cup when placing the bearings in it was much tighter than the top bearing and again there was no play the measurements were 52.3 52.3 52.2 and 52.1 so all very similar which is good to see not bad overall my friends now the handlebars are fully integrated and they work nicely with the frame as you can see we have these rubber grommets in the bars which can be removed which then gives you two ways to route the cables which is a nice touch because if you have seen my previous videos routing cables is not the easiest yeah the cable room wasn't the easiest on this bike we also have the rough section in place for the shifters to get a better grip so overall i'm pleased with these bars and we will see how we get on during the build sizing wise you can order any combination of 40 42 or 44 centimeters for the width and 90 100 110 and 120 for the stem quite a few combinations it's also nice to see that the headset spaces can be split into two halves making it easier to add or remove them once the routed cables are in place this is such a nice thing to see and it's clearly being considered they are also plastic and not aluminium the plastic is not as strong as the carbon steerer so if anything does wear or rub your steerer tube is not going to be the victim time to get the endoscope out and have a look inside this light carbon gravel frame set Looking at the head tube first, everything looks nice and neat around the bearing seat. On the top tube, we are looking good as well. As you can see, there is little to no wrinkling. The carbon is nice and smooth. We can also see the two bolts that are on top of the top tube. Again, nice and neat around the inserts as well. Let's head to the down tube. And again, we have a nice clean carbon layup with not much out of the ordinary, which is good to see. We have countless inserts on this frame. It's nice to see that they got them looking good considering how many of them there actually are. When we look inside the down tube from the bottom bracket, we can see what appears to be some wrinkling, which could actually be some extra carbon to strengthen the bottom bracket. I'm impressed with this frame so far. Let me know what you think so far in the comments or if you spotted anything onto the seat tube and everything is looking good including the inserts that we can see for the bottle cages and the front derailleur mount for the forks i'm also impressed with their construction the carbon around the cable insert is nice and neat which can be a problem area as we go deeper into the forks we can see where it divides into two and the fork split into each blade to be honest this is probably one of the best looking frames that i've seen when checking it out with an endoscope which is actually really really positive to see while she may look the part, how much does she weigh? To be honest, I'm not crunching the weight numbers for this build as it's a gravel bike. I don't want it to be an absolute moose, really heavy, but I don't want it to be so light that a small oak tree root disintegrates the frame into the abyss. Slight exaggeration, but you get my drift. Claimed weight doesn't include the weight of the paint, so naturally it's always heavier. The fork should weigh in at 450 grams, but with the weight of the paint factored in, my forks came in at a slightly higher 533 grams. No one said that beautiful was light. As for the seat post, the claimed weight is 180 grams and my actual weight is 182 grams. So pretty much spot on. Now, when it comes to the bars, we don't have a claimed weight because there are so many different combinations of stem length and bar width. But my bars weighed in at a respectable 480 grams. The claimed weight is 1,020 grams of the frame and my actual weight was, drum roll please, 1,140 grams. All the paint added 120 grams, which, I don't care about whatsoever. All in all, when you add up all the individual weights, we come in at 2,263 grams. Not too shabby. So the frame, the paint, and the delivery were $800, but on my doorstep, UPS wanted another $100 in import tax. I guess that's just one of those things that can happen when you're buying direct from Asia. I did have wheels as well, so it was a big package, so I'm not sure if that affected things. Do subscribe to see a review of the ProX wheels which came with this frame. This video shows you a full build process using a Chinese carbon race bike frame.